Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings and welcome everyone, alhamdulillah, for our beautiful program. Today I would like to discuss a very important topic. What to do after Ramadan? What beautiful benefits can we take from the lovely month of Ramadan so that we can practice it throughout the next 11 to 12 months? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Qur'an and, and refers to Ramadan in the same ayah subhanallah. We find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ That Ramadan is the month that the Qur'an was sent down. Subsequently, mashaAllah, it's the best month of the year. So if we want to better ourselves, we want to progress spiritually speaking. Let us have a firm connection with the Quran. Let us make it part of our daily lives. That we read it, you know, we try and understand it, we memorize it, we go through it. We try and spend some time with the Quran. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the same very verses about Ramadan that Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it to us لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Wow! What does لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like us to develop taqwa, which is piety. It's an internal thing. It's an internal spiritual state. To try and develop taqwa, which is piety. How can we do this, subhanallah? Number one, the way I understand taqwa is this, that if you love someone, you're very careful to make sure you don't do something that either they don't like, or that might hurt them, or that for instance, they, it might cause some, you know, in the long run, some issue between the connection that you have between yourself and this person. So subhanAllah, what do we find? That taqwa is very similar. Is the, in the fact that if you have taqwa, you have piety, a person, subhanAllah, develops their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person progresses on an internal level. You know, there is a very famous uh, economist and also psychologist. His name is Dan Ariely. He went through a lot of different tests to see where people lie, where they tell the truth. It's a very interesting and funny research that he did. The book is called Predictably Irrational. He has another book called Irrationally Predictable. Very interesting research he did with this particular set of, uh, of information. So he went through and he tried to analyze different people. And he tried to test where they would lie and where they weren't. And very interestingly he found that when people took the Ten Commandments, and they read the Ten Commandments before the test of whether to lie or not, he found that they had a less chance of lying. Now, a believer, subhanAllah, has a great wealth of spirituality before him in order to, and her as well, in order to develop their spiritual relationship between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So taqwa, you know what the easiest way of getting taqwa is? Through compassion. Through compassion. Because the month of Ramadan is also called Shahrul Muwasat. Now, very interestingly, Harvard University and the University of Michigan did some research. They had found, and it was a long project, it was a very long running research, it was done over a period of almost 30 years, and they had discovered that compassion, and they did it through about 13,000 colleges, hundreds and thousands of students that went through these colleges at the time, and they had found that in this 30-year period, that compassion had reduced by almost 50%. More importantly, the reason that they found that this compassion reduced was because of the proliferation of people seeing images of blood and gore and all of these things that have become quite common amongst us. So a good way of developing our compassion is by controlling what we see. 
controlling what we think about, controlling what we talk about. Because when a person, subhanAllah, the Prophet وسلم, describes that a person's thoughts, a person's tongue, a person's, you know, actions, they all have a bearing on your psyche and they have a bearing on the actions that you do to others. Very interestingly, there is a saying of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam that everyone gives from that thing that they have. Because someone had seen that he was doing good to people, you know, Jesus was doing good to people that were always troubling him. But despite that, you know, he was persistent in doing good. So someone asked, why are you doing good to people who are not doing good to you? Or they are doing bad to you? He said something very interesting. He said that everyone gives for what they have. So I am, Allah has given me, you know, goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, you know, a wealth of khair. So I would like to give that to other people. Very similarly, if all of us try to show more compassion. Interestingly, there is a research that is done by a physiologist and a doctor that showing compassion is actually healthy for a person. Showing compassion, people who are more compassionate, statistically speaking, age slower. When you're happy, you age slower. And interestingly, we find that when a person shows compassion, they're happy about what they're doing because they have inner contentment. Interesting people become more contented by giving rather than taking. Just as a side note, people become more compassionate and become more happy when they give rather than taking. But she had made this research, this physiologist and doctor, that when a person shows compassion on a regular basis, they help others. They take time out of their lives to serve others. These people end up slowing the, the rate of age and how they show the rate of age on their faces and in their bodies in general. It's very interesting. Not only that, but compassion is our key to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Compassion is our key to Jannah. Compassion is the key to a good life. Because when you show compassion, when you show goodness to others, inevitably people are going to show goodness and compassion to you. So not only is it a good choice as we've just done physically, but it's also a good choice in terms of your life. The shahar of Ramadan is designed, the month of Ramadan, it's designed for us to remember those people who are less benefited. When we starve ourselves for a short amount of time between sunrise and sunset or between the early dawn and sunset, a person is reminiscent of those people. We're doing this by choice. But how about those people who go days, sometimes weeks without food? So just to get a small picture, a time with that, it's not really starvation, it's more deprivation, that we deprive ourselves a small amount of time to remember what those people who are less fortunate are going through. This is a brilliant experiment. So we can say Ramadan is a brilliant sociological and liberal experiment to try and find how we can benefit other people and the less fortunate in society. By a person staying hungry for a small amount of time, a person reminds themselves that subhanAllah, there are other people out there that they don't get the opportunities of having an iftar. You know, we get to break our fast, you know, after the sunset. Most of the people get a chance to eat and sometimes, then I might add, lavishly as well. But having said that, when you stay away from food for a small amount of time, one is, rem it's not the whole year, it's just one month. One is reminded that there are people out there that need food. One is reminded that one has a duty, not only as a believer, but also as a human being, a duty as a citizen of this world to help others. Interestingly, there is a Japanese scientist who said something that really hits home. There are one billion people in the world who are, one billion people in the world who are below the line of poverty. And there are another billion people in the world who are obese. 
He said something very interesting, that one billion people in the world who are obese and one pe billion people in the world who are below the line of poverty, you can't solve this problem without solving that. So a good part of our Ramadan is to remember that we have to show compassion. This can be very simple. We don't even need to show monetary compassion. Do you know, just giving someone a call, I'm here for you. Someone had passed away in the family, give them a call. You don't even have to physically go there. Sometimes the rules of social distancing won't allow it. So you have to show compassion, but you don't need to be antisocial to do that. You can show compassion by giving a call. You can show compassion by writing a letter. And even better, a believer can show a compassion by raising their hands and making dua for one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the strong bonds that existed between the Sahaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Muhammadun Rasulullah, the, the, the people, the, the, the messenger of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he describes the people that were, were amongst, that were with him, that they were ruhama ubayna, that they had rahma, they had mercy amongst them. Another important point that we take from the month of Ramadan is the strength of Iman. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That verily the believers, they are such, subhanAllah, إِذَا, إذا, you know, إذا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned amongst them, if they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then their hearts, you know, tremble and their hearts move and are motioned with the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the belief. So subhanAllah we find that when you increase yourself in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That their hearts, subhanAllah, become, you know, they cultivate the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we do this? In our modern day and age, very simple. We have to set a timetable. Let us timetable in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't leave it to chance. Because most likely when you leave it to chance, and you're like, yeah, I'll read the Quran later. Oh yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll pray later. Oh yeah, I'm, you know, I want to give this charity, but I'm going to do it later. Actually have a routine for this. I met someone, subhanAllah, they have a routine that before Fajr comes in, they've already taken, you know, in their donation box and they give, you know, some donation. They put it on the side, later on they distribute it amongst people, but they've made the intention and they've done that. Before Fajr comes, they have read some Quran. Before Fajr comes, they've done so many things. So perhaps maybe we, we're not mourning people, some people are not mourning people, but you can timetable in that you perhaps maybe before Dhuhr, or at least before Asr, and the maximum before Maghrib and Isha, that we do something to, to build our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we do that, subhanAllah, we become better citizens, we become better people, and we, we better ourselves and the society that is around us. As subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the deen is nasiha. A deen, nasiha. What does nasiha mean? It means well-being. It means to feel good and want good for others. Subhanallah, we are reminded, subhanallah, of an interesting incident that happened at the time of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. There was a young man, subhanallah, this young man was known in the society to have a lot of vices, you know. Unfortunate as it sounds, that he had all of these vices. He was, you know, troubled with intoxications, troubled with so many different things. And, you know, first I would like to make dua for everyone that is, you know, we all have our demons, we all have our skeletons in the closet. But we have to make an effort to try our best to better ourselves. The difference between the successful people and the ones who are unsuccessful are the ones who, the unsuccessful people are the ones who gave up. And the successful ones, they might have failed, but after every failure, they came up and they motivated themselves. So we have to motivate ourselves to keep moving. You know, subhanAllah, just on a side note, in the gym I read something very interesting. You know, when I used to go, I used to go to the gym before, before the times that the gyms were open, when the times the gym were open, that subhanAllah, 
I used to see on the wall interesting messages and they, you know, motivating messages. But the mu'min is such that wherever they go, they take a message. Wherever they go, they understand. And the nasiha, subhanallah, the nasiha, the hikmah, dalatul mu'min. As the Prophet ﷺ said, wisdom is the lost item of a mu'min. So I found my lost item in a gym. So I saw on the wall written, pain is the meaning of weakness leaving your body. So sometimes when you're suffering, you're doing reps, you read that pain is weakness leaving your body. Coming back to the story of Imam Hanifa and this young boy. This young boy used to spend the entire night screaming, oh, and he was his neighbor. He used to scream and disturb, and Imam Hanifa never did anything to disturb him. But subhanAllah, we find a very interesting act was done that changed this boy's life. Later on, this boy ended up getting into jail. Because people were after his debts. He was heavily indebted. Imam Hanifa, one night after not hearing the commotion, most of us would have been like, oh yeah, finally, we got rid of that neighbor, the neighbors moved out. But Imam Hanifa wasn't like that. He said, he, he went to the jail, he asked, what happened to this boy? And they said to him, he is owing debts. It was about 80,000 dinars. It's a lot of money, 80,000 gold coins. He paid the gold, he paid, he paid it off. They let the boy go, and when he went out, the boy said, what happened? He said that Imam Hanifa has paid your debt off. He went to him, and he said, Sheikh, why did you do this? Like, I used to spend my night complaining and screaming at people. He says, now you should know, I, want, I did this so that you know the society and people care about you. Let us try to show compassion, and let us try to make our society a better society. جزاك الله يا من هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس